ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه وسلم اما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير حد حد محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر المور محتثاتها وكل محتثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته كيف حالكم جميعا يا أيها الإقوى وأقوار أو brothers and sisters in Islam you begin بإذن الله with a tremendous dua of our Beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafi'a wa rizqan tayyibam wa amala mutaqabbilam and we ask Allah Jalla wa Ala that he grant us beneficial ilm beneficial knowledge and that he grant us halal wholesome provisions and actions which are accepted and actions which are accepted bi'ithnillah tayyib wala shak wala rayb there is no doubt that Allah jalla wa ala has laid down numerous characteristics and qualities for the people of iman and interestingly enough you will find within those qualities those sifat that Allah Jalla wa Ala has laid down for the believers, the mu'minun, you will find one that is very consistent. And Allah Jalla wa Ala mentioned this in different places throughout his book. And it's always associated with the people who do, or the people who offer a salat. And interestingly, it's, 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 it's definitely interesting if someone was to reflect on this, truly reflect on this. And see the connection that is being made here. That when a person prays and guards their prayer and pray in the manner in which Allah Jalla intends, and that which way the Prophet prayed authentically, then there are certain characteristics that is associated with the person who prays. And that sometimes if we don't if we're not careful and we don't pay attention to that. If we are those individuals who praise and do the opposite of these characteristics, is there's a contradiction within our prayer. And that is the fact that Allah Jalla wa Ala, He mentions after talking about the believers having khashia in their prayer, after talking about the believers having this total devotion and submission within their prayer and guarding their prayers. Allah Jalla wa'ala mentioned along those lines He says وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِآمَنَاتِهِمْ وَأَهْدِهِمْ رَاعُونَ Okay Those who لِآمَنَاتِهِمْ وَأَهْدِهِمْ رَاعُونَ Those individuals who When it comes to fulfilling their trust Okay The amanat Which is a clear Indication that the fulfillment of trust is connected to iman. All right, ra'un, and they are those who fulfill their covenants. So the ahd, the covenant, as well as the amanat, is associated with the individual iman. If you want someone to be upright with you, if you want someone to be fulfilling their contracts, you want someone to fulfill their covenant or to fulfill their promise, then no doubt Iman is what's going to be that thing which is going to dictate them being honest with you. Do you understand? And a part of the believer is that the believer is the individual because of her, his or her prayer which is a alaq, a connection between them and their Lord, it demands from them that they be upright. All right? If an individual is a person who prays in the manner that he or she is supposed to pray, then their trustworthiness will be strong. 
and depend upon the weakness, you understand, of their iman is going to depend on the weakness or the extent of their trustworthiness. The Prophet وسلم, is reported to have mentioned as it comes in numerous narrations that the Prophet وسلم, talked about one of the first signs of the hour being established is the removal of al-amanat, of trustworthiness. The removal of trust, brothers and sisters. That's one of the first signs of the hour is that the removal of trust will be removed. I want you to now take a time to think about what I'm saying to you. If iman is that thing which binds the trust to be upheld, and the Prophet Sallallahu is saying that the first thing of the removal, the first thing of the sign of the hour is that the removal of trust is going to be removed from the people. What do that say? Okay, what do that say? Something to think about here. Because a lot of times, we don't realize that there are order, there's a nidham in Islam. And... A lot of people have their own opinions as to what a beginning Muslim should start with and what a Muslim period should start with, right? But Allah Jalla wa'ala and His Messenger already gave us a nidham, an order. As Sheikh Salih Fuzan, Allah, he pointed out that when you look at the Arakan of Islam, the five pillars of Islam, there is a nidham there. There is an order there. So one has to come before the other. You understand? Which is going to bind the other. And if you go out of tone, and if you don't go in the correct order, there will be uh, problems that will arise within the person's Islam. Such as the order, no doubt, is the asl is the foundation, the shahada. You can't skip that to go to any other pillar in Islam. Just giving you an example. Likewise, you don't skip the salat. After the shahada You understand These two must be right in connection The shahada and the, the salat goes right after it Why is I'm bringing this up Why is this important What is this connected to what I'm talking about You have to understand again As I keep telling you Allah Jalla wa ala is talking about The individuals illa musallin Except for those who pray Except for those who pray The connection is there because Allah Jalla Wala talks about the qualities that they have. And prayer is a strong connection between them and their rub. You won't find the people who pray cheating you. It doesn't work that way. You don't find people who pray on the regular. Correctly now. Not people who pray and they just pray mechanically. They don't pray correctly. They don't understand what they're doing. But if you find someone who is true to their prayer and understand their prayer, they're not going to cheat you, no matter who they are. It will become at that point, it will not allow them to do it because of their iman. All right? And that's what I wanted to talk about today from a story that have taken place in the Quran of two legitants who have climbed over the wall of Prophet Dawood alayhi salatu wasalam, and they have wanted him to judge in a matter between them and this is not the time to go into the whole entire story I want to go into a part from the story if I can inshallah we will be using Shikr Thimeen explanation because again we use the ulama because I am not a scholar brothers and sisters so I follow those, alhamdulillah, who are, I believe, deemed as trustworthy, strong within their knowledge. Okay, in the application of that knowledge to help us understand what is being said. Okay, Tayyip, in Surah Sa'd, the 38th chapter of the Quran, and between the verses. Twenty one to twenty four. I mean twenty five actually. Twenty one to twenty five is where this story takes place. Okay? 
Again, like I said, we're not going to go into the entire story. We're going to go into one of the legends, okay? And one of the disputants who have climbed over the wall, all right? They said to Dawood, rally this brother of mine. Inna hadha aqi lahu tis'un wa tis'una wa tis'una na'ajatan wa liya na'ajatan wahida. Faqala akfil miha wa azzani fil khitab. All right? Rally this brother of mine, and when he says brother here, Aqi, he's talking about the brother in his deen. All right? And the noble it brings in parentheses, but in the tafsir, it tells you that he's talking about a khubwa to fiddin. All right? Not his blood brother. He's talking about his brother in religion. Okay? Which is an interesting point that Shaykh Uthameen brings in his commentary to this. It's showing you that if people have a dispute, it does not necessitate that their brotherhood in the deen is cut off. They still remain brothers in the deen even if they have a dispute. All right? Uh, you don't need to go to extreme and cut your brother or your sister off because you'll have a dispute, which is common to happen. Okay? You're going to have a dispute. It's common to happen. But your deen, you're still brothers in, in faith or sisters in faith. You don't cut them off because you have a dispute. So, type, he says here... Um, the in that he says, I have 99 oohs, okay, and I only have one, meaning my brother in faith he has 99, but that isn't the problem that he has 99 and I only have one. That's not the problem. The problem is, is he's telling me that I need to give him my one, okay, and and if that wasn't enough, he argued with me to where as though he overcame me and the argument, which happens, brothers and sisters, somebody being more eloquent than you, and we're going to mention the narration, the Prophet ﷺ remind the people of being fair, uh, to be fair and to be just, you know, and be careful, extremely, overcoming someone in the argument to take advantage of them. Do you understand? So he overcome me. He overcome me and the argument that I should agree to give him my one to his 99, which would make 100, right? Um, so there's a lot of things that Dawood did within his response to this that we're not going to harbor on, okay? Because he immediately, as Shikr Taimi mentioned in his commentary, he immediately felt, you know, some type of way to hear the injustice that was being done here. That he responded to the legitimate and not listen to the, you know what I mean? He responded to the claimant and not listen to the other individual to hear his side of the story before passing his judgment. Okay? And it's important that you hear both sides of the story and you don't listen to just one. Okay? Regardless of the situation, you should hear both sides of the story. All right? Nonetheless, we still learn a lot within here. He says, Dawood Islam immediately without listening to the opponent, he has wronged you in demanding your u in addition to his u. That's the first thing. Look, called the zalamaka and su'ali bi, right? Nu'aji. Ila ni'ajihi. All right? Bi su'ali na'ajatika ila ni'aji. That's what he says. But then this part here is what we're going to talk about. He says, and rarely. Many partners oppress one another, except those who believe and do righteous good deeds, and they are few. Okay? This is what we want to harp on today, inshallah ta'ala, of this particular story. Shikrat Dimin, rahmatullah ta'ala, he mentions first and foremost that the statement of Dawood, alayhi sallallahu alayhi when he says, wa inna kathira min al khulata, okay? The word khulata here, it means shuraka, which is plural for the word sharik partner okay someone who is a partner okay now here what is alluded to since the man is talking about business is alluded to a business partner here okay no doubt there's all types of partnerships okay there's partnerships between friends there's partnership between brothers there's partnership between sisters there's partnerships between husband and wife okay there are different types of partnership. We already know that. We are aware of that. Okay, tell you. He says, All right? He says, Okay, so 
right? And we already translate this part. He says, Shigar Thimin says, now, there's an exception being made here. Dawood is saying that when it comes to partners, majority or most of them oppresses the other individual. They, I mean, he oppresses one another when it comes to majority of them. And only a few from amongst them. And then he mentioned the characteristics that those few are going to have, which is going to prevent them from oppressing the other. Okay. All right. So Shigar Timin, he says, for Khalil, the few that he's talking about, they do not oppress one another. And they are the ones whom Allah has described in his statement when he says, This is where we need to really pay attention at. Here in this verse, Allah Jalla wa'ala is giving us the benefits of Iman and righteous actions. Iman, brothers and sisters, is a deterrent. Do you understand? If you have proper Iman and you have righteous actions associated with that Iman, which lets you know that application of your belief is important. And if you have both of them, then you are highly favored and highly blessed from Allah Jalla wa'ala that you're going to be a stand-up individual. It's not possible that if your iman and your righteous actions are intact, that you are not a stand-up individual. We have to examine ourselves. How often do we break our contracts? How often do we cheat one another? How often do we lie to one another? How often has we been untrustworthy to one another? How often has we not fulfilled our covenants or our promises to one another? All of that and still at the same time claiming to ourselves that we are people of Iman and righteous actions. Think about that. It says a lot about you. This is why you have to love this deen. It's responsibility and accountability. You can't come into the deen. You can lie to yourself all you want. You understand, but you perceive you perceive it not. You think you're lying to Allah, you're not. You think you're deceiving the believers, you're not. If you're not a trustworthy individual, due to your iman, which dictates that, and your righteous action, there is a problem. And many Muslims today, you can't trust them to turn your back. You can't turn your back on a Muslim today. That is a shame. Do you not understand that? That's Aib. You might say, brother, I think you're going a little bit extreme. I'm not going extreme. Because if I go back to the earlier narration I mentioned from the signs, and we go back to Hudayfa, where he mentioned that, indeed, it was a time I can do business with so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. So-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. I didn't have to worry about who I'd done business with or conducted business with. He says, now I can only count on my hand. And this is during the time of a companion saying this, brothers and sisters. How many years have transpired since then? How many centuries have went by since then? All right. That now I can only do business, you know, on my finger. Do you understand? You're supposed to feel safe when you are conducting a transaction with any of your brothers and sisters in Islam because you know that the Iman and the righteous action is going to prevent them from cheating you. It want to prevent them from lying and not fulfilling the contract. That's what it's supposed to be. But you don't feel safe. Not today you don't. You don't feel safe. Do you understand? So you can't even begin to trust another Muslim. <laughs> and you're wondering what's going on. Okay? There's two ways you can look at this. Instead of you just looking outwardly at other Muslims who doesn't practice their faith correctly, you need to begin to look inwardly first and foremost and see if you are practicing your faith correctly. Because you play a major role in that. You want someone to be trustworthy towards you, then you need to be exude that trustworthiness due to the iman that dictates from you. You be trustworthy. You fulfill your covenants. You fulfill your trust. You be honest. And when you are like this, then you search out to only conduct and do business with individuals who reflects this as a mirror. This is why the Prophet Sallallahu he says, Al-Mu'min kal-Mu'min mira'ah, or Al-Mu'min al-Mu'min 
tal mira. He says that the the believer to the believer is a mirror. It's like a mirror. There'll be a reflection that should be shown upon both of y'all. What I supposed to be doing correctly, I should see within my brother. Why I supposed to be doing correctly, I should see within my sister. Do you understand? This is why I love Islam again. Because see, you can claim all you want. But if you are not righteous and you don't have Iman, it's a clear indication that you are lying. And Allah says this over and over throughout the Quran. And they lie against their own selves. Okay? And they are not believers. Huh? They think Allah talks about the hypocrites. They think to deceive Allah and those who believe, but they only deceive themselves. Well, Allah keeps telling you over and over, you're not fooling anyone. If you truly are an individual who is a believer that has Iman, look at the characteristics. You are a person who has a connection, a strong connection between your rub. And within that, you're going to do certain things. Why is this mentioning within the characteristics of the believers? Because fulfilling your trust, fulfilling your contracts, and all of these things is a part of what your iman dictates. So Shaykh Thameen, Rahmatullah Ta'ala, he says, For mu'minu amilu lis-salihat, la yahtuthu minhu al-baghyu, lima ma'ahu min al-iman, mu'amilu salih Look what he's saying. He said, so the believer who is an amil, an active believer, do you understand? Of doing righteous deeds, it will not occur from him or her. Any buggy, and by the way, he says buggy is al urduwan. Al urduwan is zulm, it's oppression, brothers and sisters. It will be nothing will occur from him or her if they are an active believer. And doing or practicing righteous actions that they will occur from them any oppression. All right, he says. He goes on. Look, he says, "Wa man fatahu shay, on min had al wasfi, hasla minhu min al bagi bi mqdaro ma fatahu min al wasfi." And he says, "Whatever is missing, anything which is missing from iman or from righteous actions, do you understand?" Okay, then there will occur the oppression from that individual to the extent of what is missing from the quality itself. In other words, he's saying if a person is short within their iman or short within their righteous actions to the extent of their shortness within that description, then that's going to be the amount of the oppression that would see where occur from them. This gives you an understanding when you say to yourself, I just did business with brother Fulan. I just did business with sister so-and-so. And she cheated me. And the brother cheated me. And you can see now. You don't have to go extreme. I don't want to be Muslim no more. Because the Muslims are not trustworthy. I don't want to be X, 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 Y, and Z. You don't have to go extreme. You don't have to blame Allah. You don't have to blame his deen. For the missteps of someone... Who are deficient within their iman and their application of that iman. You have to understand everything. Be just. The brother you were dealing with, the sister you were dealing with, was deficient within their iman and the application of their iman. That's what you were dealing with. You wasn't dealing with Allah. Okay? You wasn't dealing with Allah. So don't blame Allah. You were dealing with an individual who was deficient within their iman. Or deficient within their application of their iman. That's what you were dealing with. Not Islam. Do you understand? And then when you put it in its proper place, you realize that that brother or that sister isn't trustworthy due to the fact that they have fell short within their iman and they have fell short within the application of that iman. We have to understand the difference. Not to be extreme. So he says, and to you, he says, فَمَنْ نَقُصَ إِمَانَهُ حَصَلَ مِنْهُ بَقُ Whoever we found that is deficient within his iman or her iman, then they will occur oppression from that individual. He says, Woman call it salih, And where we find that if there is a little bit of practice or application to their iman, meaning doing righteous actions, then you're going to find from them oppression. He says, the Anna Amila 
He says, because righteous actions is such that when the person performs them, it leads the individual to do more righteous actions. If you are a stand-up individual, you're going to continue to be stand-up. Do you understand? If you're not a stand-up individual, you're not going to continue to be a stand-up individual. If you are a fraud, a froster, I mean someone who's fraudulent, someone who lies, someone who cheats and steals and pretend to be something else, then you are a pretender and you're not going to lead to do more righteous actions. You see? All of that, the curtain is going to be lifted. This is why the Salaf, they say we know an individual from one of three things. And one of the three things, when we conduct business with a person, we know the individual. Do you see that? Travel with the individual. <laughs> conduct a business with the individual. Right? We know an individual. One of three things. You want to know a person? Conduct a business transaction with someone. And if that business transaction isn't on the up and up, isn't straight, and see, so you have to understand something about a business transaction. There are multiple things and components that needs to be there. But the usu of the thing that needs to be there is known as what we call rida, pleasure between both parties, agreement between both parties. And the overlaying thing that hold that things together is the sheer transparency, which is brought about through the honesty. Which is also dictated from the iman of the individuals and the righteous actions. Do you see? Everyone want to tell you how they are so business oriented. And don't even know the akam of Islamic business. You're not business oriented. The deen is divided into two. One is divided into Tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal. Two is divided into Halal wal Haram. What it is in regards to your actions, what you can do and what you cannot. Period. So if you're telling me that you are a stand-up business guy or you are a stand-up businesswoman and you don't know the ahkam, the rules and regulations that your Lord has dictated and your Prophet has dictated you for transactions, then you're not a stand-up business person. I'm here to tell you that. You are in stand-up. And this is why Umar ibn al-Khattab, he would not even let you con conduct trade within the marketplace when he was the Khalifa. Because if you didn't know the Ahkam, you need to go. And what you're not understanding why Umar ibn al-Khattab did that is because when a person doesn't know the rules and tra transactions, there are two things taking place here. One, it is prone for him to cheat his, right, his customer. It's prone for him to cheat his brother, cheat his sister, because he doesn't know what he's supposed to be doing? What is right or wrong? Secondly, you have to understand now, not only did it cause or was prone that he would cheat, is that the simple fact he doesn't have the necessary component that will, will prevent him from doing all of these different things, such as his iman. Okay? What, what it is, I'm supposed to be conducting this transaction on behalf of my Lord. Not because we're in the land of the Kufar, you can argue and, and, and say, well, I've been conducting business for 30 amount of years. But you've been shrewd in your business practices for 30 amount of years according to the standards of the Kufar. Which you don't even know that correctly. Because the Kufar business is laid out with regards to taxes. And you don't pay that. So you cheat them in regards to paying the taxes on your business. Then you turn around and say that you are a businessman. Or you are business this. No, you're not a business anyone. You are a person who don't understand the important role of your iman in connection with transactions. You are a person who doesn't understand the role of your righteous actions in connection to your transaction. There is no way in the world, brothers and sisters, that we should be continuing to conduct ourselves in a ill manner. How many stories do we have of Muslim brothers and Muslim sisters cheating you out of a business deal? You got too many, right? Too many. Just cheating you out of a business deal. I can't do business with Fulan or Alan because so and so is not trustworthy. Why aren't they trustworthy? What's the reason why they aren't trustworthy? Because they're not being honest with themselves. Honesty, brother. In the Quran, Allah Jalla talks about the believers being what? Kunu Sadiqeen. Be truthful. These are characteristics that must be present. You understand? You can't fathom a believer being a liar. It's just, <laughs> that's a, they don't go together. He's a believer in what? And he's lying? No, you can't fathom that. She a believer in what? And she's lying? She, no. I think you're mistaken here. 
No, if you're a believer, lying cannot be associated with you. Yes, the believer doesn't lie. Yes, <laughs> this is why the believer's testimony is accepted. You see, but if you're not trustworthy, brothers and sisters, this is going to become a problem. And that's what we're dealing with in this day and age, not realizing that we need to stand up on our own selves and start taking accountabilities and become better individuals within our own selves if our if we don't know what we need to know then we need to learn and equip ourselves with learning man we really do man because it's a shame that many individuals are deceived to believe that they are stand-up guys or stand-up sisters and they are not stand up with their own lord so how i expect for you to be stand up with a, a servant of your lord you understand so look at the shake says he continues here he says this is what he's saying, one of the benefits of doing a righteous acts, that it brings a ladh, it brings this tasty, okay? It brings this enjoyment and this happiness within the heart. When you are a stand-up individual, you are happy because you are a stand-up individual. Do you understand? You are a trustworthy person, you're happy within your heart that you are a trustworthy person. You understand? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, before he was even a prophet or a messenger, he was known amongst his people as Al Amin. Do you understand? He was trustworthy already. They can leave their belongings with him and it's, nothing's going to be taken from them. Do you understand? How many of us, including myself, you can leave your belongings with me and it's still going to be intact once you come back? You understand? And you keep wondering why <laughs> brotherhood and sisterhood is, can't be strengthened. You wonder why we can't be connected because you cheated me. She cheated her. That's why. I'm just, once you go around for land and land, I can't go around that, that joker. That joker cheated me. Yeah, you wonder why. <laughs> you know, and it's come from me as well. Being so, again, you got to be self reflective to take some accountability for all individuals who I have conducted the business with and I have slighted you in any way. Now, Fisa Buzaid apologized. That's still not enough because you have to understand that when it comes to money, brothers and sisters, it plays a direct role with the cult. It plays a direct role with the color. And it's not just the money. They're not cherishing the money. They're cherishing the principle. I have let my guard down. I have supposed to trust someone who say they believe in Allah and his messenger. And the individual supposed to have conducted and behaved itself in a certain way to be trustworthy. But they cheated me. I let it my guard down and they cheated me. So I have a bad feeling about that individual. And you're walking around acting like this is not a problem. And people are so arrogant, they act within themselves that they shouldn't even think about that. I don't want no one on the face of the earth ever have to bring their face together and say that Nafisa Buzay cheated them out of anything. That's going to grieve me and pain me until I meet my rub. Until we are able to get between that. Because what you're not understanding, some people feel oppressed and they start making dua. And the Prophet ﷺ said, there is no hijab, there is no screen between the one who is oppressed, yani, and Allah. You have to understand. So you walking around, not really thinking, not taking accountability. You slighted your sister. You slighted your brother. At the same time, telling them that you believe in Allah and His Messenger. Right? But Shikr means saying that, no, you're not a disbeliever, but you have a deficiency in your iman or your application of that. That's what the Sheikh is telling us. And because if you didn't have a deficiency there, you would have did what Allah Jalla Wala says in this verse, Illa ladina, there's an exception made. That what was telling them. You're not going to find those who believe and uh, uh, do righteous deeds. They're not going to oppress one another. It's the benefits with dealing with someone righteous. He says, إِذَا قَامَ إِنْسَانُ بِهَا زَدَادُ الرَّقْبَةً فِيهَا وَإِذَا أَعْرَضُ قَلَّةَ أَهَمِيَةَ الطَّاعَاتِ so he's just letting us know that when a person stands up right, then he increases within his desire to do that righteous, that righteous, that righteousness. And if a person was to decline or turn away, then the importance of those acts of obedience with him, there will be a weakness within his objective and his aim to do those righteous actions which lead him in terms to do things that are wicked. Okay, disobedience. When a kathira min The Sheikh says, he said the lamb here, 
when he says la yabghi ba'dhum ala ba'd this is for emphasis brothers and sisters wa yabghi min al baghi wa huwa udwan he said it's, trans, it's it's transgression okay it's transgression wa hadha huwa waqa he said this is something that occurs the many partners they ought to transgress and oppress one another imma bi aqt and then he says this either they take some of the wealth which was brought about through the partnership or they conceal some of the profit which it was a profit between them which many people don't know in Islam there are five types of partnerships do you understand five they have a text in the hadith that goes along with it there are five types all you have to do is go back to Malakus al-Fiqih from Sheikh Salih Fuzan and he have about 17 chapters explaining about business and transactions and partnerships do you not understand five talking about you are a business woman or a businessman but you don't even know your deen in regards to being a business person if you want to be stand up then you arm yourself with ilm pay attention to what the prophet ﷺ asks he said oh allah i ask you for beneficial knowledge first and foremost what did the prophet ﷺ ask first beneficial knowledge what knowledge he's talking about beneficial legislative knowledge knowledge that his lord jalla commanded him with that's the first thing this came before anything else seeking provisions he asked for beneficial knowledge which is of risk which is a provision from allah also but he asked for that first before he asked for what Provisions, wholesome provisions. Okay, letting you know that what you earn need to be halal. <laughs> you see that? What you earn need to be wholesome. Do you understand? If you earn something that isn't halal, brothers and sisters, you see the point? You see that? It needs to be toyibat. Okay? Because Allah Jalla wa'ala is toyib. La yakbalu illa toyib. And He doesn't accept that except that which is good. The only thing he accepts is that which is tayyib, which is wholesome. Okay? And he says, وَعَمَلُوا And actions which are accepted. You don't do an act. Carry out a transaction. And don't worry about the consequences or the result of that transaction. Transparency, brothers and sisters, is no matter if it's a believer or a non-believer conducting a business with a believer, it's going to be the same fear tree. Do you get that? This is why Islam put every other religion to shame when it comes to being fear and jest within their business dealings. This is why you can read the biographies of the Salaf and a person in droves of people who came Muslim because I did one business transaction with Fulan. This is why. He conducted the business transaction with me and I feel that they, that's a religion that make them stand up like that, where they can be trustworthy like that. I want to accept that. How many of us, including myself, that can say a person did business with us and they thought about Islam afterwards? A lot of us, they ain't thinking about no Islam. Actually got a bad taste about Islam after dealing with us. I dealt with Fulan and Alain. Yeah, that, that joker, yeah. He says he Muslim, yeah, and he supposed to be Muslim too. He supposed to be Muslim too. Yeah, she supposed to be Muslim, yeah. No no, no trustworthiness. Right? A bad taste about the deen. All because of your transaction. For Allah is You go into a partnership, you need to understand the precepts and the knowledge and the nuances of what type of partnership it is. You have to understand contracts are binding, whether written or verbally. This has been explained in the longest verse in the book of Allah. You know, understand this? The longest verse in the book of Allah comes in Surah Baqarah, brothers and sisters. And it's called the Ayat of Dain. Do you understand? The verse of death. It's the longest verse. It takes up a whole entire page. Do you understand? In the book of Allah that deals with death. And it explains clearly within that verse that a verbal contract holds the same weight as a written one. There's no formality. Oh, I'm just doing a contract for formality. What are you talking about? What you can't play with the dean in that way. It's no, no. I, I'm just doing it for formality. It's just this something that just come along with it. No, if you have a contract, whether written or verbally, it is binding. 
Do you understand? It is binding. And what makes it binding is your Iman. Your righteous action. If you are a wicked individual, deficient within your Iman, then you can say something like that to another brother or sister. Oh, it was just a formality. Who look at a contract as a formality? In what world? The Kufar don't even look at a contract as a formality. They don't play when it comes to black and white ink. Yes, they take you to court for that. They seize your, yes, they seize your stuff for that. The Kufar don't even play with that. No one plays with a contract as a formality. But if you are used to doing that and making statements, oh, it's just a formality. It's not a formality. You tripping. Your Iman dictates that this is real. This is a contract between me and my brother, me and my sister. And guess what? My Lord is watching. He is the witness over me in this contract. Do you understand? This is what Musa, alayhi salam, he said, okay, to Sha'ib, what did he tell him? What did he tell him? He says, I will go into a contract. Look what he says. That I marry one of your daughters. I come in a contract with you. And he didn't even mention that marrying one of his daughters. That was a condition that was made by the father. He said that I go into a contract with you for eight years. But the father wanted ten years. And he wanted to give him his, his daughter as what's name? Since sort of the What did he use to bind the contract between them? Wallahu <laughs> shahidun Allah is a witness over what I say. Allah is a witness over what I say. Iman, brothers and sisters. We both believe in Allah. We both know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is listening, watching. So he is going to be the surety of me fulfilling my contract. Do you understand? I don't need to write a paper. It's not black and ink. But Allah is the surety. It's the Iman that dictates that. It says a lot about your Islam. If you cannot conduct a transaction correctly. And partnership is one of them. Know what type of partnerships you are getting involved with. And look what uh, Dawood is saying. He's saying that you're going to find many people, brothers and sisters, many people when it comes to partnership, destroying one another and oppression. Jacob Zabit says either he can take it or conceal or he can deceive the person in regards to the wealth. Meaning that he directed or uh, exchange it in a manner which it is not uh, preserving the partnership between the two parties. Or that he can, يعني, what he can do is the person can claim. Okay, that what was gathered through the partnership that he, that, that he owned, that he owned it specifically was for him. Okay, he says, He says that the different types of transgressions that occur at the hands of partners are many. He said, however, many of the partners, they oppress one another. Well, he had the either aslah shuraka niyyah. He said, for this reason, when the partners, they purify their intention before coming into the partnership. And they advise one another. Then they become successful within the partnership as it comes in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Indeed, Allah Jalla wa He says, This is major. Pay attention. Allah says, I am the third. Of the two partners. So I am the third partner. <laughs> this is major. I am the third of the two partners. If it's two people who are a partner, Allah said He's the third. Right? As long as one of the partners do not betray his other partner, then you still have me in the partnership. Allah said, I am a partner within the partnership as long as one of you do not betray the other. Do you see this? Major. Look what he says. And if he was to betray his partner, then I leave this partnership between them. If he was to betray, and if you want to know where this hadith is at, it's collected by Abu Dawood in his book of Buyur, under the chapter heading, dealing with partnership. You not see that? Allah Jalla wa says, I am a partner, the third of the partner. I remain as a partner to you as long as one of you do not betray the other one, which gives us the incentive to be honest to one another. 
Do you not see? Sheikh Uthameen, he says, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمْلُوا صَلَحَاتِ إِلَّا الْدَاتُ الْإِسْتِثْنَاءِ Now he's talking about the word illa itself. It is used as a tool of inception here. And he goes into all of his grammatical points, but we're just going to move into the next point here because he's just showing you where illa can be used, whether it's going to be mensub or whatever, so not to just lose what we're talking about here. Tayyip, he says, and this is important right here that he mentioned this part right here. He says, he says, "Aminu bi kulubihim wa amilu salih bi jawarihim," meaning that they are those uh, who believe within their hearts and they act on righteous deeds with their limbs. Wa amilu yutla ku ala kulu wa fitl. And he says, when it comes to action, it's something that can refer yani via statement or actions, in opposition to just action itself. Inna hu yutla ku ala fitli jawari. For that is only. Um, yeah, and he referred to that which is the actions of the limbs. And a statement can be that which is the statement of the tongue. A salihat, righteous actions here, he says, all of this, he had the sifa to lima sufa mahduf, yani, what is it is a sifa, a, 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 a characteristics or an attribute uh, to the mausuf which omitted, meaning that amilu a'amalu salihat, that they do righteous actions. Wa jamu abit tibaru an wa'u salihat. Right, and he says the plural here it considers all types of righteousness, such as salat, sadaqa, siyam, fasting, hajj, uh, doing righteousness, uh, con- um, maintaining the ties of kinship. Th- many are like. For he had that jumi at wahyani yakul amila saliha for yufrabi tibaru jinsa amila ala subule umum. So he's just letting us know that when you see the word saliha by itself singularly, then it means this. And when you see it salihat plural, then it includes all of them. That's what he's letting us know. All right, he letting us know that he says wa a'malu salihat qala ahlu ilm. He says that the people of knowledge they said when it comes to righteous actions, he ma jama'at sharatain, then there are two conditions that must be gathered within them, meaning the person must be sincere. Okay, unto Allah Azza wa Jal wa mutabi'ah and he must follow the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Fala salaha ma shirkin. وَلَا صَلَحَ مَعَ بِدَعًا بِلَعْتٍ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى He says in this the action would not be uh, sound or, or, or correct if it contains any shirk nor would it be correct or sound if it contains any bid'ah Okay as Allah says فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرَجُ لِكَعَ الْرَبَّهِ فَيَعْمَلْ عَمَلَ الصَّالِحَا Again look at this Whoever hopes with the meeting with their Lord Pay attention to the wording فَلْ Here the Lamu Amr is here is a command so Allah says, then let him do al amal al-saliha, a righteous, then let him do a righteous deed. Wala yushrik. And within that deed, don't let him join in worship to his Lord with anyone else. All right. Wa ala hadha, law anna rajulin salla riya'in, fa amalahu ghayra salih, li faqt al-ikhlas. He says, according to this, we see that if an individual was to pray, and he was to pray out of being seen, show off, then this action of his would not be considered to be Sound or righteous due to the absence of what? Sincerity. Well, and if a person was to worship Allah Jalla wa ala according to a means or a method which was not legislated from Allah, he says, then however, he can be sincere in this act, but still, uh, he be sincere in this act, intending to get closer to Allah, however, he will not reach anything. Because he has voided following the Prophet in doing that act. Do you understand? We really have to start understanding what Islam means. Stop being so attracted to this or that and not knowing. Every one of us have to understand what we say in our mouths when we say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. We have to know what this means. I'm not Muslim because Fulan up the block is Muslim. I'm not Muslim because my brother, my sister, my whole family is Muslim. I'm not Muslim because this person up here or that person up there. No, if that might been I've been born into Islam, okay, well, alhamdulillah, but I want to learn about Islam. I want to learn about my Rub. I want to learn about my Prophet wasallam. These are the things I want to know. Why? Because these are the three questions you're going to be asked individually in the grave. It don't matter. Do you understand? Each and every one of us is going to be asked, who is your Lord? What, who is your prophet? What is your deen? You have to be Muslim, brothers and sisters, because you have to learn what it is to be Muslim. You can't keep running around saying, I'm Muslim, and you don't know what it is to be Muslim. Do you understand? These are bad tastes. 
you understand? We are shuhada bain nas We are supposed to be witness among mankind. What do it mean when it says we shuhada bain nas Witness like what? Allah Jalla says Muhammad is a witness to us, and indeed he's a witness because you can't see this contradicting behavior in the Prophet We don't have one narration that the Prophet cheated anybody. We don't have one narration that the Prophet uh, was a hypocrite in regards to his actions. We don't have one narration where the Prophet was in stand up as a believer. We don't have that narration. Do you understand? We'll have one narration. So he was a witness between us, showing us exalted standard character, how to be on the best behavior, how to be the most trustworthy, how to be the most stand-up individual. He has shown us that. So he became a witness unto us. And then in turn, we can become a witness unto mankind, showing them the same thing. Do you understand? When people look through different communities, they say, okay, they cheat, they rob, they steal. And they look at the Muslims, they're supposed to be an example for them. They don't cheat, they don't rob, they don't steal. That's what they're supposed to see. But unfortunately, when people look into the Muslims, the different communities, the Muslim communities are grouped right into it. No, they steal, they rob, and cheat just like they do. What's the difference? Right? Because again, how many of us are really, really practicing Islam? We don't even know what it means to really practice Islam. We still think practicing Islam is talking about who you take from, who you associate with. I mean, what type of Jill Babb I'm put on the day? What kufi I'm gonna throw on? What name I'm gonna take? What attribute I'm gonna use? You still think all that is being Muslim? No, being Muslim is having iman. You understand? And the actions that emanate from that iman because you are using the application. That's being Muslim. A connection between you and your rub. That's being Muslim. Do you understand? And that Muslim is going to be on their best behavior because of those ingredients. Not being Muslim because you're talking about, I take from so-and-so, or I'm down with so-and-so. I mean, y'all got, we tripping. I'm saying me to all of us, we're tripping. We're missing the point. They should be writing stories about us just like they write stories about the self. Why? Because the Iman was intact. Because the righteous actions was intact. I had dealt with a Muslim. Alhamdulillah, they are the best people I ever dealt with. And now you can see why Allah Jalla says, Ula They are the best of mankind. You can see why Allah says that. But in regards to us, you can't see that. But I'm going to say we the best of what? Yeah, them, them jokers are liars. That's a shame. They can say about us as Muslims, they liars. Muslims don't fulfill no contract or nothing. They lazy. They don't do anything. They're liars. We ask Allah Jalla Wala to make us better individuals. And that if we're going to go, regardless in this dunya, we need to learn knowledge. No matter whoever you are. The deen is divided into two, as we said before, before we get ready to stop. That is divided between what? It's divided to you knowing who your Lord is, this Tawheed, and knowing between your actions, halal wal haram. If you're going to conduct any transaction, brothers and sisters, understand that that is representing your faith. You say you are a believer, then represent your faith correctly and do it well. Do you understand? I don't care if it's a non-believer or a believer that you are doing business with. Think of when you can ch- conduct that, that transaction, you are representing your Lord. And do you want someone to look at your Lord bad? Do you want them to have a distaste in their mouth towards the dean of your Lord? Because you don't want to uphold the right transaction. This go for me. It's for me as well. Person doing business with you and they, and, and they say, oh yeah, he's a Muslim or she's a Muslim. They feel easy. Regardless of no matter what they do. They know that, yeah, yeah, I got a stand-up guy. And they give you the benefit of doubt at first until you show them otherwise. They give you the benefit of doubt until you show them otherwise. That's when they start saying, oh, man, it's... And, and, and you can't even argue for them. You can't even argue on their behalf. You can't say, subhanAllah, you know what I mean, brother, you know, this, this. no, he, he said his name was Tariq. Said he was Muslim. Last but not least, the last thing I think I think I mentioned it earlier, but inshallah ta'ala, you see that you see the effects of prayer. I, I didn't really go into it, and I, I, I left that off. But the more you pray, brothers and sisters, the more stand up you become. If you find yourself praying and you don't become stand up with anything you do, then you're not praying correctly. That's right. Inna salata tanha and fahsha wal munkar. Indeed, the prayer prevents you from what fahsha wal munkar. Allah says it. If you're praying, brothers and sisters, and you're not more trustworthy, 
and you are a liar while you're praying. You are a liar. You are a cheat. You are a deceiver and you pray. The prayer is not doing nothing for you. Yes. The prayer isn't doing nothing for you. If you're not becoming more honest, you're not becoming stand up and you're not becoming righteous when you pray, then the prayer isn't doing anything for you. That goes for me and it goes for every last one of us. So the more that we pray, our character should be changing. That's what needs to be happening. If your character isn't changing, something isn't right with your prayer. Do you understand the difference now? This is why Islam, you can't fraud. This is the only thing you cannot come in and fraud. You can lie to yourself, but you can never lie to Allah. Do you understand that? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us better, to really start understanding what Islam means and to practice Islam. And allow us to be those who really fulfill our contracts, those who really don't oppress one another, whether it's our wives, whether it's our husbands, whether it's our, our children, whether it is our, our mothers, whether it is our relatives, whether it's our kid or our kif. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to truly allow us to appreciate this deen. Let us see the beauty of it before we leave. Let us see the beauty of it because right now, if you don't see, a lot of us are leaving our deen before the angel of death is coming. A lot of us who were just, just last year garbed up, just last year in the masjid praying, just last year guarding our prayer, reading the Quran, we're not doing the same thing this year. We're not doing the same thing. We are leaving our deen before the medical moat comes. And we are gambling with the deed because we think that we're going to have time to get back on the straight and narrow. It doesn't work that way. The moment you keep having that enjoyment is the moment when Allah Jalla sends that angel. And he comes and he's not going to hear any plea. He's going to take your soul in that state. Stop thinking you got time. Subhanakallahum bihamdik ashadu la anta astaghfirullah jazakallah khairim. Assalamu alaikum wa